Uh, yeah, nice to be here. Uh, my name is Carl or Kalle, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, a project me and my uh, teammates from our CTF team did uh, over the summer, basically, uh, where we tinkered a bit with some Game Boy and Game Boy games. Um, yeah, short introduction about myself. Uh, as I said, my name is Carl, 28 years old. I uh, have a master's in computer science from KTH here in Stockholm. And I work as the head of security at the healthcare startup Kry. Uh, however, that's not really relevant for today's topic. Um, I also play a lot of CTF competitions with our team, uh, Hacking for Sodium. And if you would like to get in contact with me at some later time, uh, you can reach me on one of these methods. So that's the uh, first part of the mail address at cdatu.com. Uh, there's a limitation in, in like resolution and screen space here in this uh, Game Boy ROM. So can this please work? Yes. Uh, so as I said, um, I'm in the CTF team. And since last year, we are helping organizing uh, our own CTF competition. It's called the Midnight Sun uh, CTF. So the idea is to do this every year, and we started with it uh, last year. So we do an online qualifier in the spring, and then an on-site finals uh, at the KTH uh, University here uh, in Stockholm. So we did it for the first time last year, and then uh, again this year, and we're already planning for uh, next year. And we have like a student class for student teams and an open class for uh, everyone. And I'm kind of like the responsible for uh, the technical aspects of the competition. And one of my design goals uh, when doing this was that when we have this on-site finals, we should utilize this fact that we have these teams on-site uh, at the same place. So I want to have some challenge that uses some kind of physical aspect. Um, so in this year's um, finals, we had a challenge that was called the HFS Calc, which was uh, created by uh, one of my teammates, uh, Bob. And uh, it's a pwnable challenge. And what does that mean? So uh, a, a pwnable is a, category, a standard category in CTF competitions where you get some kind of uh, program you're supposed to uh, find one or more uh, bugs in this program uh, to corrupt the memory of the program and thus gain control of the execution flow uh, and typically get yourself a shell and the flag. This is typically done on um, like mainstream architectures, such as x86 or ARM, because uh, that's what people are familiar with, and that's what's uh, easy to do. Uh, but we did a Game Boy game, which was a pwnable. So I mean, OK, the game is maybe stretching it a little bit. It was a calculator app on the Game Boy. So we had it flashed it on actual Game Boy uh, cartridges. I actually have with me today uh, some Game Boys and uh, the cartridges. So uh, if you want to like, look at it and try it out, uh, you can uh, come see me either tonight or throughout the rest of the um, conference. I will be carrying them around. I guess will be some, some kind of deposit system, I guess. Um, it looked like this. So the setup was that the teams were given um, a copy of the Game Boy ROM that they could download to their computers. And they were also, there were also these Game Boys with the uh, game flashed to them. Uh, there was one difference, though, that the, the copy they got on their computers just had a, a placeholder flag. So they could analyze the code, look at how it worked, but even if they managed to um, find a bug and create an exploit for this, uh, they wouldn't get the flag. They would have to go to uh, the actual physical Game Boy, and by inputting their exploit through the uh, gamepad, uh, they could exploit this and leak out uh, the flag. So for anyone who has been doing these kinds of uh, challenges uh, in a more regular setting, this was kind of quite a, like, a uh, standard textbook uh, challenge where you had a buffer on the stack which contained uh, the results of the different uh, calculations. Uh, unfortunately, there was no bounds checking 
on this uh, buffer, so you could uh, continue making calculations until you would uh, overflow this buffer and then um, corrupt the return address of this function, which is like the standard um, way of, uh, like the, one of the most basic ways you can uh, exploit uh, a program. I mean, I won't go into too much detail on that. Uh, it's uh, like if you ever try out anything like this, not not on a Game Boy, but like on a reg regular computer, this will be like your first uh, like Pwnable 101 uh, challenge. Uh, and then there was a bit, a little bit of uh, protection uh, to prevent some attacks, but the protections were pretty weak. So you could, by analyzing the um, uh, the code, you could overcome this uh, protection, and then by playing the game in the correct way, you could eventually cause it to go into a different uh, function. This is what would happen if you didn't over overcome the uh, protection. So this is a little bit of a spoof of what it would look like on a regular system uh, with the same protection if you um, failed to overcome that protection. I don't think any other Game Boy game has this kind of uh, screen. Uh, anyway, if you did it the right way, uh, you would get the flag like this, and uh, with a little image related to one of the sponsors of the uh, competition. Um, so uh, we did that for this um, finals that was in, uh, in June. And we started thinking about um, the Game Boy and what, what can you do with the Game Boy and how can we take this uh, further. So first of all, like, what is the Game Boy? I mean, okay, it's it's a it's a extremely popular gaming console, but from kind of like a, a computer science or hacker uh, perspective, it has its own um, basically custom uh, chip, which is like a hybrid between the C80 and the Intel 8080, and uh, it's a four megahertz um, processor with a little bit of RAM, and then you have these uh, ROMs, which are on cartridges that you can insert. And um, they are the, the simplest ones are just 32 kilobytes of uh, memory. But then there are more advanced cartridges where you can swap out the top 16 kilobytes uh, of memory for other uh, sections of uh, 16 kilobytes of memory. So this is called a bank, a block of 16 kilobytes of memory, and you can uh, cycle through these banks. So some of the Game Boy games even had as much as an 8 megabyte uh, ROM, a lot of content in the game. It has an LCD display, uh, 160 by 144 uh, pixels, which runs at 60 FPS. So quite impressive for like an 89, I think it was released. Um, and uh, this is also why my slides are a little bit pixelated, because they follow this, these uh, restrictions. Um, OK, great. So we are, I mean, I'm a big fan of anger. I've talked about it uh, previous times. and. Uh, we started thinking about maybe we could build, like, implement the Game Boy architecture for the Anger binary analysis uh, framework and do uh, automated analysis of uh, Game Boy games. Uh, that's uh, a crazy idea that could work. So a Anger is um, it's a Python framework for analyzing uh, binaries. It's mainly developed by the security lab at UC Santa Barbara, but have a lot of other uh, contributors. It supports uh, a bunch of different uh, architectures. Unfortunately, not the Game Boy. Why? Uh, no, uh, uh, this, we thought that this would be an uh, excellent exercise, because it is extendable. You can build your own, you can implement your own architectures and plugins and modules for this uh, framework. And uh, basically, what you have to do is you have to build uh, a lifter that takes the uh, like machine code or whatever you're analyzing, and uh, converts it into um, VEX, which is the uh, internal kind of representation, the intermediate language, I think, originally used by Valgrind, but uh, also been adapted by Anger to use for their uh, binary analysis. So you build this lifter 
that converts your Game Boy code into this VEX representation, and that way you can interface with the uh, Angular uh, framework. So we started doing this, uh, encountered uh, a few challenges with this, mainly uh, three challenges. First of all, uh, we had this um, bank switching issue. In most programs, you load the program into memory, and each uh, piece of the program has a unique address. In this case, uh, that's not how it works, because since we can switch out the banks, uh, they will still have the same address. So the same address, depending on which bank is loaded, can uh, mean completely different parts of the memory. This was fairly easy to solve, though. So what we basically did was that we uh, kind of extended the architecture to, instead of use like 16-bit addresses, we created this uh, fake register that uh, kept track of which bank was loaded. And then we pretended that everything was like 24-bit uh, addresses instead and did some uh, tweaking there. And that was um, no problem. Uh, another issue is that in most systems, uh, if you have a piece of memory and you write to one address and then you read from that address again, you will get back what you just wrote. Uh, that's not how the Game Boy works, because they have reused uh, all of these uh, addresses for the ROM. I mean, from the name, it's like read-only memory. So um, that's where you have all the code and data for the game. So you will read this, uh, but you will there's, you, can, you can't write to this memory because it's read-only. So what they've done is that they have kind of like reused these addresses so that if you write to one of these addresses, that is instead interpreted as sending data to the control registers within the Game Boy cartridge. For example, for switching these, um, the banks out, uh, or uh, in the case of a game like uh, uh, Pokemon Gold, which has a real-time clock in it, you can communicate, communicate with the real-time clock by writing to these uh, addresses. Um, so here we had to kind of implement like a hooking uh, mechanism. So basically, we're hooking every write, checking uh, what address we're trying to write to. And if it's one of these control registers, uh, we make some uh, adjustments to what the operation is doing. Um, also, no big, I mean, it's a completely solvable uh, problem, basically. Uh, then we realized our third uh, challenge, which is that uh, this is like an embedded system. It has um, interrupts. Specifically, the Game Boy has five different uh, interrupts. Uh, it has a V-blank interrupt, which is fired every time one frame has uh, finished rendering. So you have a small uh, window of time with, in which you can uh, modify some parts related to the graphics. Uh, there's also the LCD uh, stat interrupt, uh, which gives, can provide some information about uh, what's going on with the rendering. You can use this to create uh, like uh, wave effects over the screen and things like that. There's just a general purpose timer interrupt that you can uh, keep track of different timed events. There's a serial interrupt for if you're using the game link cable. I don't know if you've ever played. For example, again, if you're playing Pokemon, if you want to trade with someone, you connect the cable to your Game Boy and to the other Game Boy, and you can communicate with each other. So that's an uh, uh, interrupt related to that. And then you have an interrupt for just um, input. So why is this a problem? Uh, because basically, an interrupt uh, means that at pretty much any time, we can have code that starts running um, like other code than what we think is going to run will run instead. Uh, and that causes a lot of issues if you're trying to uh, model and analyze this uh, code. So um, yeah, as I said, uh, we solved first challenge with uh, creating this um, extra fake register and using that for reading stuff. Um, the um, control registers uh, were handled by doing like a, a global breakpoint, checking what, where we're trying to write, um, and divert this uh, write somewhere else and prevent the original write. With the interrupts, however, there is really no good solution, because there isn't really like a good idea of how to model like multi-threaded uh, um, processes, which is in, in this context, which is basically what this is. Um, 
but we are we can make it, we can like minimize the problem at least a little bit. So for example, the serial stuff, as long as we're not looking at games which use the game uh, the game link cable, we can just disregard that. Um, for some of the interrupts, <laughs> the V blank and LCD stat interrupts, uh, we can hope that most game designers have only put code there which relates to uh, the rendering of the game, and not like the actual game logic. Uh, so if maybe we could just disregard those, and uh, it will, I mean, it would mess up the image if we tried to render it, uh, but we're not, so hopefully it won't matter. And it, when, when it comes to the in, uh, input interrupt, it turns out that uh, most games don't really use it. They are instead polling the input state and checking uh, what the current input is. So. Uh, in most cases, we can also uh, disregard uh, the input um, interrupt because it's it's typically not used. Uh, the general timer thing will, of course, be completely uh, different depending on the game. Uh, there might be, you know, we might be able to do some uh, manual tweaks and uh, you know patch it and somehow. But basically, there we, uh, we we didn't have any any solution uh, for this in, in in the general case. So um, this uh, work resulted in uh, some, like we built some various tools for parsing these things and uh, still working on this uh, Angular module. There's still, uh, the idea was to be able to kind of release all of this uh, today, but uh, we had some last minute discoveries, some, some uh, bugs and stuff, and we didn't want to uh, just release uh, garbage. So uh, unfortunately, we had to uh, postpone uh, that a little bit. Uh, one big resource that we uh, used throughout this thing was uh, there's something called the Game Boy uh, Pandox, which is uh, some uh, people who have basically reverse engineered uh, like how the Game Boy works and documented this uh, very thoroughly. It's a very good resource if you want to uh, look into this Game Boy hacking um, a little bit more. Um, so the the whole idea with doing this thing was that uh, we want to to kind of like uh, do some like automated analysis of of Game Boy games, uh, preferably like at a scale. And the idea was that maybe we could find um, some uh, some new bugs in games that haven't been uh, discovered yet. And uh, for the the anger module, the idea was to be able to. Uh, Maybe not um, like analyze the like, whole games, but at least like sections of games to build up, like to find out the relationships between different parts of the code, to uh, simplify um, the the analysis. Uh, we also looked a little bit into like uh, the fussing of games uh, by like building our own emulator, which is still a little bit work in progress. The problem with um, games is that like. Typically, the whole point of games is that they're kind of like uh, preventing you from uh, progressing, and there are very many different states. Uh, and if you just like open a game and press buttons randomly, you typically won't advance the state of the game uh, that much. Uh, so you would have to build something more clever here, which we uh, haven't managed to. Uh, however, there's one positive result throughout this uh, whole project. Uh, we did find a way to basically use an existing bug in a popular game uh, in a more powerful way that it has that has been done than what has been done before. And uh, again, uh, this is something that we were hoping to be able to finish up uh, before today. But yeah, uh, the the idea is that we think that we might be able to get the new world record uh, for a popular Game Boy uh, game using this uh, bug. So we'll see if we uh, manage manage that. Um, so throughout the the um, as a kind of like last thing uh, at the competition, uh, the original idea was to have two Game Boy games, and uh, um, I mean. We we chose to not uh, release the second one because we had enough uh, challenges, and we thought that we would release it for the SECTI conference instead. So um, tomorrow, or possibly Friday, 
we will uh, release another uh, Game Boy Pwnable uh, challenge, and um, which is in the similar vein, but this one will, will be an actual game. It's a snake game that you can exploit to find the hidden flag inside the game. So we will release this both uh, uh, online, so you can run it on an emulator, but also uh, I will have physical cartridges of this uh, game, so you can uh, play it here throughout the uh, uh, conference. And uh, we are thinking to have some kind of competition and first want to solve it, uh, some kind of uh, prize. More information will be on that. Um, so the final little thing we did for this was that so we have this challenge. Uh, we have this challenge with with a game that you want to be able to exploit. Typically, when you are do building these exploits um, on a regular computer, uh, you want to be able to automate the process uh, to um, keep any manual work at a minimum. And you typically you're iterating, you're trying something, and you realize there's a mistake, and you redo it. And uh, this uh, calculator challenge we did. I mean, that one was extremely simple, but it still requires like a, up towards like 100 button presses to perform the exploits, which is a bit tedious, especially if you make a mistake. Uh, so we thought that for this a little bit more complicated one, uh, we would create a way to uh, automate this. So uh, we added into the game that it would react on the serial input from the game link uh, cable. and uh, you, and treat that as input as well. And then we took one of these game link cables, which is a very simple, uh, like a two pin or three pin, it's a clock and then data in uh, both directions. Uh, basically just cut it in half, put some connectors to at the end and connected it to an Arduino. And that way we could control the Game Boy game from the computer by just sending stuff uh, through the Arduino. And that way, you could automate the exploit for this uh, Game Boy game um, from your computer and like iterate um, on your process. So there was just a small extra little fun thing we did. And that's basically what I have. Any questions, comments? Great. Then. Uh, I would just like to thank uh, some of my teammates who helped out with this uh, project, and uh, our Helmut from uh, the Anger team, who has been helping out with a little bit of Anger internals. And also just uh, plug our monthly Ponable live show on uh, YouTube, which is called Pony Racing, where uh, each month four competitors uh, get the same Ponable challenge and compete against each other, trying to be the first one to solve it while we provide like, commentary and analysis. A very good um, learning and educational uh, resource. So with that, thank you, everyone. <laughs>